This week on Two Noobs, college students gone amok. Looks like the noobs need to provide another First Amendment lesson. When will they learn? Then Wally the Comfort Alligator has gone missing. We demand answers and want him returned immediately, but still not out of Philly's game. Next, a man gets a 34 billion, with a B, dollar bill from the IRS, and it's not Mark Cuban. Welcome to Joe Biden's China. Finally, we close by giving John his shot at wrestling's head of creative. Will he be able to fashion the best ever? Start the entrance music. Ooh, yeah. It is episode 188 of Two Noobs Talking. Stop that. Oh, okay. sorry. 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 Uh, knock it off. That's right. Yep. Um, you should, yeah, you I should a, be. Sorry, yeah, I had a rough week, guys, okay? Yes. My, I was walking like a cripple for three days. Um, Beg pardon? What happened? Yeah, I threw my back out last Sunday. Oh. Yes, I remember. Reaching, reaching down to pick something off the floor. It's that not sucks. fun. You gotta bend to your knees, not your back. I know, I know. Uh, but uh, let me throw out a special thank you to DDP for his uh, back pain series of programs, which Very have, good. have me back on the road to recovery. I'm feeling a lot better. There He's you awesome. go. Um, well enough that uh, yesterday for a hearing against Apple, I was able to throw on my business attire while still wearing shorts. <laughs> nice. As I shared with both of you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Business casual doesn't always apply to hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the visual I want to get out of my mind. Ah, ah. <laughs> when, I, when I first saw the picture, I was like, what is he, going on a sports program? <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. It reminds me from that from that show back, uh, I forget what it was called, but uh, they, they had the sports anchors and they would always do the show when they were in their three-piece suit up top and their underwear yeah. <laughs> with socks on. I think that might have been an old sports center commercial from back in the day. Probably. I think if I remember right. Yeah. Probably. In fairness, it was more than just underwear. I had legitimate shorts yes. on. Okay. So Still I Still a frightening that. visual. Well, of thank you, you for set, making sure you had shorts on before you said <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you. Good Lord. <laughs> hey, look, guys, uh -oh. my skivvies. Uh <laughs> Just don't show that, that that way in court, Steve. That's the only thing. That's the fear, right? You know, you go in in the court and you're thinking like, oh, I've got everything dressed. So you walk in and you just have your <laughs> underwear on. What the hell? Yeah. I'm, I'm fairly certain that would not happen to me. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Wear, wear your pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. thank God for virtual hearings because yesterday would not have been a fun day to suit up. Yeah. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 And immediately after the hearing was over, it all comes off. <laughs> Because that's Calm how I down, roll. ladies. Calm <laughs> down. <laughs> I had a T-shirt on underneath. Okay, give me. A okay. break. all right. Give me a break. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, I'm in a Florida mood today. Okay, so over there, that's Jacksonville John Tracy. That over here, that's Miami Matt Craig. I in the middle. I am sop choppy Steve Murray. There you go. <laughs> Look it up. Look there it you up, go. people. Nice. Yeah, it's oh uh, man, I am so far so who's away moving from to Florida. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so who's moving to that city in the Tornado League? Right? I mean, what, what would choppy? you be? Chop choppy yeah. pork chops or something like that? Who knows? But yeah, Hell, we'll, yeah work it out. we'll work it out. We'll work it out. I was out. once from Sheboygan, so I could go anywhere. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, of the three of us, you've kind of been all over the map, Mr. Tracy. Yeah, in small um, places in Japan, yeah. right? <laughs> That's You've right. been uh, w wait. You were in Japan. You were in Sheboygan. Yes. Chicago. Uh, were you in South America at all, or was that? I the, don't know. I was not. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Bill was it? Bill was okay. He was the, South la the last place I was, and I don't even remember, but it was uh, it was where they first found the pterodactyl. So there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Year. So that yeah, I moved to there because you know who who right. doesn't like pterodactyl. Yeah, right? exactly. Blind right? lizards. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I went from I went from San Francisco to Roswell to 
God, it should have been just everywhere. Back to San Francisco. Oh, I was in. Well, I took over Christmas Lake Valley. For yeah, a little Christmas Lake Valley. Yes, yes yeah, you yeah. did. But you I did. am, I am back to San Francisco. Right? No, no, I'm now in Wilbur. That's right. Yeah, that's I'm right. In Wilbur Cobbs. Oh, yes. that's right. Yes. Fun fact: me, I had a. Yeah, yeah go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just going to say Baton Rouge, Vancouver, Baton Rouge, Philadelphia. Now, nice. I've kind of like done the whole big check mark in reverse kind of thing. <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> um, what I was going to say was I had a phone call or a video call with a gentleman from San Francisco last week. And he told me fun fact, and I never used this term. So I was in the clear. He said, people from there hate it when you call it Frisco. There you go. Cause he asked, he asked if it was okay for him to call here Philly. And I was oh. like, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. That's we, we say it all the time. Yep. But apparently people in San Francisco do not say Frisco and they hate when outsiders Say Frisco. No, I will kidding. only now refer to it as Frisco. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's harsh, dude. You're so mean. There you go. Wow. Uh, all right. Well, let's all get right. into the W Energy Fun fact while we're on a tangent. Sure. Visit W Energy at W.GG. It's D U B B Y dot GG or download the app. And if you enter our promo code, Two Noobs Talking, that's T O O N O O B S Talking. You can get 10% off your order. Matt is Games of Thronesing it up today with Dragonade, a special blend of dragon fruit with pink strawberry lemonade. Burn through your day with this jitterless concoction. And with our promo code, you get $4 off a $40 tub. So suck it. There you go. All right. Uh, oh. Matt, you have the fun fact for us today. Chris. I do. This one go came. And as you guys know, I love stats in NHL and, of course, now you have your next-gen stats in the NFL. This one is the NHL Edge, which is, the, I guess, the version of the NFL's next-gen stats. Nathan McKinnon, one of the best skaters in the world, gentlemen, maxed out at 300 miles skating over an 82-game season. He was the only player to eclipse 300 miles skated this season, logging 300.15 miles, equivalent to more than 11 marathons wow. over the six month session or season I should say and per game 300 miles in 82 games which he played in every single regular season game comes out to about 3.65 miles per game so nice. wow that nice. is impressive I do we just know how many minutes he played but that I don't know okay that I don't know I, I'm I would, gonna, I would say maybe 20 in the 23 to 25 range would be my guess for four that's start so. forward, yeah. A yeah. start yeah. forward who plays power play. Yeah. And I think he kills penalties. That's probably he the, might, if he doesn't kill yeah. penalties, it's probably more like 20 to 22. Yeah. Then like, he I, touched every inch of that ice. Oh, no question. That's what I was trying to make sure every game. Yeah. He, he's he hit it all. Yeah. He's and that probably, guy can fly too. He, yeah, that guy. I I whenever I see like him f skate, it's like a, the thing about him is that it's effortless. It just looks so effortless when he's out there on the ice. It's him with and McDavid as well. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of give that little bit of a shout out. Very just cool. kind of give you guys an idea of what you might be wanting to do if you ever go into the yep. NHL. You could do a, <laughs> a marathon over an 82 game season, I, I, or multiple marathons over an 82 game season. I should say that's quite something else. Man. I will not I run okay. 11 marathons. I will not skate the equivalent of. 11 marathons. I will not watch 11 marathons. Yeah. I will eat cheeseburgers and sit on my fat ass until the day I die. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. John is the All Phil Kessel just, of this prod <laughs> podcast. That's right. I'm just, I just, I laid it down at this point. I yeah. worked out enough when I was younger. I'm fine now. Yeah, there you go. All right, now, now do Phil Kessel. <laughs> <laughs> my stomach just grew. Did that happen? <laughs> There you go. All right. Well, uh, speaking of sports disappointments, John, we're we're going to uh, give you our Sixers end of season next week. Yes. Um, we, we we need a few days to digest what's gone down in this last uh, week or so of games in the playoffs and their untimely exit. But John wanted to throw an over 40 in today on that very subject. You can see he's wearing the hat. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So I will let him go forth and prosper. It's the only damn hat I brought with me, so I'm stuck now for, <laughs> for months. Uh, I want to I want to stop the bleeding real quick with Philadelphia and the Sixers. Um, they should have they should have beat that team. I understand, but yeah, yeah we blame you by the yeah. way. They should they <laughs> should have. Yes. we blame you for this. They should have easily beat that team because when 
when two players tried their hardest, they won. When two players got stopped, nobody else tried hard for more than a quarter. So I, I, so I have the most interesting take to that. Okay. This is absolutely the best thing that could happen to Nick Nurse in his first season. Because he's a prick and will never fail like this again. So I can't wait for the offseason. He's probably going to hang out in Maury's office before Maury even gets into his office. And be like, who's my power forward? Who's my backup shooting guard? Who's my fifth guy off the bench? I need six dudes that can play defense. I feel like he's going to just annoy the shit out of ownership until they put a team on the court that doesn't lose the the series point total by one point. And that's looking at you, Tobias, with your 97 missed layups in that series. Oh, goodness. I can't wait to see you play for Detroit. I really can't. <laughs> How about Sacramento? Why don't we just ship them there? I'm just no, saying. he needs to go to Detroit and average 35 points and lose every single game. That's what he needs to do. How about the Chinese basketball league? Why don't we send him over there? Yeah, send I, him I mean, there he's too. way taller than all of them, though. So, yeah. yeah so he'll be a superstar over there. You but know, like yeah. what we what we paid him to be here. <laughs> but, but Yao, Yao is really big over there, so he might not take him because Yao likes players to play. <laughs> so, how many how many points did he have in game six? They get the good old zero. Great total of zero. Yeah. yeah. And how much money was he making this season? Forty million or something like that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And you know the best Ouch. part about it, the, the best part that that if you hate him, this is your moment. If you hated that contract like I did and other people did, this is your moment because he had so many opportunities to step in the threes, which is one of his one of his things. And he just looked the ball. It was just bad. His fundamentals weren't even there. And that was wow. there. Yeah. Well, the good news is the two star players you're talking about are under contract. Yes. Along with Ricky Council the fourth, I believe. Yes. And that's it for next year. <laughs> this is why this is why I'm telling you the bright part is is Nick Nurse is a prick and this yeah. is gonna go his way now. There you go. <laughs> Hmm. You have three starting lineup positions we need to fill. Hmm. Let me give you some thoughts on that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, goodness. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we'll dig into that more and we'll get John's take on who they should sign or trade for or whatever. Next week in episode 189. Until then, we'll say, oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> oh, we got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's other things we got to do. Oh, yeah. Top, topic one. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John, stop messing around in my uh, Google sheet. There's nothing there. <laughs> There's nothing there for you to see. I can see you I don't have a, there. I don't have a pen, damn it. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason there's nothing there, topic one, we're just kind of going to go off the cuff here because there's there's plenty of news stories you could pick from. Yeah. Uh, as I said in the intro, college students gone amok. What the hell? I guess this can be our over 40 rant. I guess so. Uh, uh, probably like the... The, yeah, right. The biggest name out there you see is Columbia University, where there's been an encampment there for weeks with the supposed goal of getting the university to divest from Israeli business or something. I don't know. It's kind of yeah. overshadowed by all yeah, the something like that. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever they're protesting up there. Yeah, right. They don't Whatever even know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they also took over a building there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. Wondered why the university wasn't feeding them after taking over the university's building. And then uh, the, uh, the cops showed up and evicted them, which is more than we can say for other places in New York where people Good are squatting Lord. in homes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, we also have incidents at UCLA where there were some clashes. Uh, Penn has an encampment on its campus. Temple University, though, haven't heard squat. Yeah. Very fortunate. Good going there, good boys yeah. and girls. We, we love it. Um, the reason I think we wanted to talk about this was first amendment once again, coming up, rearing its ugly head because people don't know what the first amendment means. Um, private university 
can silence your speech all they want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. now, you know, as colleges try to be bastions of free speech. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think no, I'm sorry. I think there might be somebody at my door. Sorry about that. <laughs> they claim to be bastions of free speech. More like it. Yes. Um, people complaining that, uh, Hey, we're protesters, free speech. We have the right to be here. Uh, Gentlemen, I don't know what you're seeing. I'm not seeing exercises of free speech here. I see trespassing, false imprisonment, yep. kidnapping, depending on how the statute reads. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Matt, I'll go to you first. Put you on the spot. Wow. Yeah. No net. So many, so many takes I could go on this. Um, but actually, one of the biggest takes I wanted to kind of bring to your guys' attention. As you guys know, I'm, I'm studying to become a deacon in my church and, you know, heavily into the Bible. And I, I just happen to read this from the book of Proverbs. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Huh. That, that's I mean, a good one. That's a great one. Great one. That's yeah. a great one. Yeah. Right. Uh, that, fits, that fits what we're going through right now. That's what, exactly. That's exactly what we're going through right now. We're just expressing opinions, but there's no understanding. There is a lack of total understanding. Now, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has gone back decades. It's not just something that just happened on October the 7th. This has been going back for decades. Yeah. And it has been a struggle. Maybe even and further it, than that. It depends absolutely. on how much you want to yeah. really dig into it. Yeah, Absolutely. This is, it, it, you also have a situation where you're mixing politics and theology together. That, I mean, I don't care who you are, that is a recipe for disaster. Every single time when you go across something like that, that is just an absolute recipe for disaster. But what's happening right now, I think what I read in Proverbs was huge. I, I could not believe it. It was like the Lord was <laughs> directed me to that verse. And it was like, yeah. That's exactly what's happening right now at our Ivy League yeah, universities. That's a, that's a good one. That's a real good it one. It really is. Yeah. And it's like, I, to be able to change this, gentlemen, is this has been going on for decades. Maybe not necessarily like in terms of the social media explosion that's happened, but certainly back in the mid to late 90s, it was kind of festering. It was like, oh, you know, we could probably cause some ruckus, but we're not going to do it. You know, that kind of thing. We'll have like a discussion and we'll call each other names back and forth, but we won't go to the extreme level of knocking, going into a building, beating up cops on the university, you know, campuses and whatnot. We're not do, we're not going to go there. We know if we go there, we're going to get evicted. That kind of deal. In, in fairness, I don't think there's been much beating up of cops. Um, I saw a video of several gentlemen who used makeshift uh, shields out of partial trash cans. I saw that too. Who then proceeded to get their asses whooped, whooped. which was which was fun. Yeah, exactly. But please please go on. Yeah, no, I I mean I could. I I mean the the biggest thing I would say is gents, I think the biggest issue really is where the universities have to have their funding pulled away until they get their situations under control. I mean it's 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 literally that simple. I mean I'm all for protesting putting after all grievances are very important. But to be perfectly honest, what this is, is not a grievance. What this is, is a brainwashing is what's happening to our, our young kids that don't know any better. And instead of actually, you know, reading and understanding what's been going on over the last decades, over the many decades of this conflict that's happened, they only look at the hot button issue. What's happened for me lately is what this whole is, what this is all about. And so. People are just expressing that opinion without fu a full understanding of the knowledge. And that's where we find ourselves. And until that gets settled down, I'm all for the cops going in, making mass arrests, and putting the law down. Because the law has to be put down whenever there is any sort of unrest. Now I can rest. There you go. <laughs> awesome. John, the, the gavel passes to you, sir. Oh, there, there you go. go. Okay. Um how do I put this? Uh, welcome to history taught by social media. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I will just give you the the absolute perfect example of Candace Owens, who is a huge fighter for the truth in this world. 
doesn't even know who she works for. And <laughs> didn't even research that and yeah. said some shit that made her not employed there anymore. Yeah. Um, it's, it's dumb in every, on every level. You have YouTube where you could educate yourself. You don't even need to pick up a book. My friend, my friend Adam, I asked when this, when, when, uh, when this terrorist attack happened to Israel and I started hearing news, I asked Adam, I was like, can you point me in a direction? I kind of want to quickly get up to speed. Yep. He said, oh, not a problem. Here's 97 YouTube <laughs> videos that will pretty good, pretty much get you up to speed by next week. Awesome. That's why I love that dude. That's why he, you know, helps us produce this thing with that stuff. It is so hard to explain it as an outsider, but it's so easy to look at it. It's you can tell that nobody from the people that are running the colleges to the people that are going to the colleges to the politicians that are talking about it. Nobody is actually educated on what is going on. Absolutely. There was a there was a poll taken in Gaza two years ago that said that said, you do know Hamas is a terrorist organization. Would you reelect them in an election? 75% said yes. So if you just look at their population and you take 75% of them and you say they agree with terrorists, that means 75% of that area is terrorists. Nobody wants to think of that. The other thing is the LGBTQ community oh. has shirts for sale on the internet that says LBGTQ for Hamas. Last, yeah. last three outwardly gay people in Gaza were thrown off of buildings. You can look that up on the internet. It's pretty, yeah. pretty well, I, I, easy. Here's your they found here's out, your they proof. threw them off the building. Yep. Here's your proof. Gentlemen, Don Lebon agrees mm -hmm. with us. Mm-hmm. Amazingly, that's yeah. saying a lot there, because there was a he was interviewing a woman who said, uh, you know, the um, gays for Hamas or whatever. Yep. And, and, you know, we we live under oppressive regimes in Texas and Florida. And he's like, are you really comparing Hamas to the governments yeah. of Texas and Florida? Yeah. Because and Don, this is Don Lemon. He's like, I'm gay. If I go to Texas, nobody's going to throw me off a roof. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Uh, it's it, it boggles my mind guys it's mind-blowing how uneducated people are in the world where we have this thing they yeah. they got to the moon with something yes. less than this yeah and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people with two of these yeah and they can't <laughs> Feature yeah. at me, me too, and one's, one's right here. I only have one, but yeah. And they can't figure out yeah. a simple, this is a simple conflict that has been going on for yeah. so many years. Yeah. This has been, this is the, the lack of wisdom and understanding. I point back to what I said before at the top. The lack of wisdom and understanding and just spouting off an opinion is not going to get us anywhere, nor is spouting off platitudes. I can't believe how many videos I've even watched, gents, of this conflict, and all you hear is platitude, 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 platitude. And I'm like, I've had enough of it, to yep. be honest with you. Yeah. I've had enough of it. It's I like, you got to tell me what the hell is going on and have the courage of your conviction. Tell me what's going on and have an idea of what you want to do to try and solve the problem. Not just give platitudes. I, oh, I, when you I, corner I, these people, that's all you yeah, get. You yeah, never yeah, get yeah. straight answers exactly. and explanations but, or, yeah. or solutions. Yeah. But I think there's a there, I think there's a big thing that we're missing in this conversation is have you seen what these idiot politicians are doing live on TV? Yeah, yeah. They're placating everything. They everything. don't know what to do. So you've got you've got Chuck Schumer stood in front of media and said we need new elections over there because it's not working out he's not even understanding no. what's going on over yeah. there yeah exactly and yeah. when you have leadership doing that 
funneling into the colleges where their leadership isn't following any. They're just like, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. It's 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 going to get far worse if if people don't step in and make some changes. Right. Right. Well, if and this was another scary thing is Al Sharpton. I agree with something he said. Um, I've never agreed with him ever. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Not you know, his, his point is his point was whatever the protest is about, it has gotten lost. It, yeah. You know, the, the headlines a month ago was always about what was going on over there in Israel and in Palestine, Gaza and all that stuff. Yep. It was all about that. What are the headlines now? It's all about what's going on on the colleges. Yeah. yeah. You know, these people, these people, when you get right down to it, and Matt pointed out the, the one video where, or maybe it was John, I don't remember, the, the video, they were interviewing the girl. And like, yeah. So why are you here? She's like, I don't know. Girls. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't know. We were down at uh, University of New York and they told us to come up here. And the other girl's like, I wish I was more educated. <laughs> yeah. I wish you were more educated too. Yes. Uh, it it would right probably, down the train. It would yeah. probably help us if they were a little more educated. Right. Yeah. But right. there's uh, there's also there's also money on the other side. Oh, I yeah. have seen reports that there are some that are there's some pretty good um uh incitement campaigns going on. There's some money on the other side, like brand new tents pamphlets being handed out like oh sure there, there are people that are manipulating the other side just to keep it a hot fret which is also should be brought to everybody's attention yeah. because you got uneducated kids being educated by idiots instead of educated by educators that probably know what yeah. we know yeah so let's let's talk about the one specific incident where they took over the building in columbia Oh. And the woman they interviewed, oh my God. Yes. Yeah. And they, they looked they looked up what she, what her degree was in. And I, I gotta hand it to you. If you're gonna pick a degree that has zero probability of you landing a decent job out of college, you might as well lean all into it and go for the PhD this woman is going for. What, what, it's, what was yeah, the major? Hey, hey. yeah. She's hey, not I, I don't remember what the major was, but she's doing something like Marxism oh. in fairyland. I don't know. Oh, she's okay. a doctor of that, though. So that's yeah, a PhD. <laughs> this is her. This is her PhD thesis. Good Lord. They interviewed her outside of this building on the campus that they had forcibly taken over. Okay, apparently they had cornered a janitor and held him against his will, which is kidnapping, uh -huh. uh, yes. or at the very least, false imprisonment. No yes. question. Um, if, or an if, ass whooping if he decided. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he'd be, exactly. He'd probably be okay. Um, but she had the gall to say, "Well, they're not. Uh, they're not feeding us. Do you want the students in here to starve?" Yes. Um, <laughs> Last time I checked, I'm pretty sure anybody who was in there could like go out, cross the street, go to the mess hall, pick something up, Uber bring Eats, it back, DoorDash. <laughs> Still, it imagine? comes back to this. Yeah. Right? We all got this. Yeah. They're Why is it the university? They don't know how to use it. That's no. crazy to me. Yeah. Why are the Why is it the university's responsibility to cater to your forcible hostage taking? Yeah. It's like I mean, just Steve. Steve. So bizarre. Steve. John. Steve. <laughs> what? You can't. They can't think and protest at the same time. <laughs> this is this is the thing. That's I also... asking too much. Right. There's one thing I will say this. Bernie Sanders uh, there was, this is a perfect not to be uh, opinion piece. And this was somebody that wrote uh, talking about the University of Pennsylvania. I can, and I'll just read it. Quote, I can tell you firsthand about the most insane beliefs that were shoved down my throat while at the University of Pennsylvania. In a mandatory engineering ethics class, we were... <laughs> That sound like that sounds like that's gonna that's gonna work so, out well in the workplace. You have to treat the screws ethically. <laughs> yes, right. Because if you twist them too hard, you're gonna strip them, and j that's just not ethical behavior. Well, here's excuse, the thing. Excuse she me, sir. Continues. Why won't you go in to the wrong hole? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my. Um, we were taught that all algorithms written by white people were racist. <laughs> I'm owning that one. I'm just owning that one. And then it goes, that's, it goes further. Yeah. I did not realize math, coding, and numbers have racial bias, but apparently 
They do. Sure, Asians are very highly represented in engineering fields, but in this case, I guess we are not considered people of color, end quote. I thought, you know, and this kind of that thing. Qu- that quote is one of the most racist quotes I've ever heard. <laughs> and it was talking about racism. Yeah. <laughs> that is weird. But that, but that's the thing, John. It's a, it, it's not necessarily racist in the fact that it's, you know, blatantly racist. It's pointing out the racism that's existing on these campuses. But that's inherently racist <laughs> because the whole point of racism is not to. Right. I'm, t- I'm just, I'm, j- I'm just no, playing I, the game I'm, as the game is. I'm right. I'm right with there with you. I'm just saying that, you know, the. I mean, we could go down that particular road if we wanted to, but the whole point is, this is a problem. This has been a problem within the colleges and universities, and it's going to take a complete, and this has been going on for decades. This type of thing, if we're going to get back to an actual university when people are actually being taught shit, you know, that, you know, makes them productive members of society, we have to get classes like this, an engineering ethics class, a third world history class, an intellectual heritage class, you name it. You got to get rid of this shit and you have to say, this is, this is marketing 101. This is law 101. This is yeah. ad law 101. This is trade 101. Couldn't you simply do that by only giving federal funding for? Well, that's quote, the thing. Unquote, the funding 11, has to be cut off. Yeah. Yes. 11 classes. If like, just like you said, it has to be these 11 and we'll give you all the money the federal government will give you all the money yes yes but if you're just throwing money at columbia university and they're like hey we're gonna have plant racism class yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you we're gonna know find out 25 stats. people are gonna take that i, have been I don't blame them <laughs> i have been oppressed by that venus fly trap I, but I, I don't I'm oppressed by stat 201 but no one's gonna pay attention to me because i'm 18 to 49 and i you know i don't blame <laughs> the students for taking the easy stuff i don't blame them for that no i blame the universities for creating the bs that they're allowed correct and the federal government for funding it if you feel like you have to go to a four-year university for addition so that you could get a good paying job all for it but here's the thing the amount of money that is being funneled in by the feds into these universities and then the fact that the universities are then charging an exorbitant amount of rates yeah. for tuition. Oh, yeah. To well, teach a scam this, this amount point. of bullshit, I'm yeah. sorry. It's a scam There's at a this full point. audit at this point. 100% oh, let, full audit. Let me let me go on to the money thing for, for a minute here. Now. Because um, there are a couple of things come to my mind. First off, the whole Columbia protest is allegedly centered on, well, we want Columbia to divest from Israel. They're taking money and spending it in Israel. And to some extent, there could be some legitimate uh, reasons you might back that. You are taking my money. Makes sense. And then you are you are giving it to a cause I don't like. We have examples all the time. Then don't go to the university. Well, that, that was going to be my point. Yeah. If you are so concerned about where this university that you chose to go to yes. is spending your money, yeah. maybe you should research that ahead of time yeah yeah and don't go uh, right yeah right? and then the, the 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 second thing is what a lot of these protests have turned into a legitimate protest to me would be as long as you're not violating a campus rule if if, if you can camp on the square yep right mm-hmm. okay fine and the first amendment in this country you can have whatever ideals you want Okay, I, I, I may not like them, and I may think you're disgusting. But if you want to think a certain way, you can think a certain way. That's yep. just the way it is, and that's yeah. how it should be in a free country. Because otherwise, you're Russia, and yeah. you get offed. Um, but so if you if you can camp there, the, the the school says you can camp there. Fine, camp there. But what's been happening is you've been it's UCLA. I saw one example where they had like barred off staircases and things yeah they wouldn't let you enter a building unless you agreed to some ideological principle yeah it's like fuck you bro i yeah. paid twenty thousand dollars to be here i'm going to class well and then, i don't give a shit about what you want that was also right? the same thing with the columbia law review 
Yeah. Rage New. I mean, I sent that to you. Or yeah. Well, the the Columbia Law Review, I think, was different. That was, hey, we're all traumatized, so just give us A's. Oh, we yeah. don't want to take final exams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, well, I mean, that's that's also stupid. Very. Um, no. And you're you're not getting the education you paid for that yeah. way either. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, that would piss me off if I was a law student there. Heck yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's all incredibly dumb. But yeah. just two two more points I want to make. Um, one is these students better be careful because at a certain point there are laws against providing material support to groups labeled as terrorists yes. by the United States. You better be careful about what you're doing and what lines you're crossing because at a certain point you may be guilty of providing material support Damn right. to a terrorist group. Yep. Damn right. And that's not going to be good. Yeah. Uh, and the second point, I don't remember what the second point is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's probably the point we should end on because, you know, it, yeah. Did you, I mean, just, you just have to be very careful with any support that you want to give, you know, to any organization. You want to make sure. Well, that, just look at just look at what 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 blew up in people's faces with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Nobody has had a problem with people having an organization that says, hey, this certain group matters. Nobody had a problem with that. But look at the background of that. All that money went to like six people and yep. 12 houses yeah. and 35 yeah. cars. Yeah. And there was a lot of egg on celebrities' faces and people's faces that were like, I, well, I did it. I would have never supported that if I would have known. It's just, it's the same thing. Like, you can't, you don't know where the money's coming from. And it's protest all you want. I'm all for. Yeah. I'm all for arguing against the system. The system sucks. The system doesn't want us to argue. <laughs> Look at our president now. He doesn't want to hear anything. Yeah. You should absolutely yep. argue against everything. Do it respectfully. Respectfully. Or, That's or, or use your First Amendment rights, but understand the consequences come with that. Absolutely. You can run yes. on top of a building and do whatever you want. You can yell anything you want. At the top of that building right over there. Yep. But if that guy that is standing right there does not like it and he walks up to that building and he punches you in the face, I don't care what happens because he <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you pissed him off. You right? played yeah. you played the game. Yep. Well, and, and you know, free speech itself has limits. It, Absolutely. You can have you can have disgusting opinions, <laughs> but the minute you start inciting to violence and you say death to Fill in the blank. Yes. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. That is an incitement to violence. Well, maybe not. Death to mosquitoes. I, I could be yeah, I know. That. I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm all I'm for, that. for that too. But it, that's an incitement to violence. Yeah. And yes. that is where that's where the government draws the line. But the First Amendment only applies to the government. Private yeah. actors, you can get fired. Okay. Yes. Yep. You could have you could have these people who are coming out of these colleges. You know, it, it might be. Hey, were you part of that protest on Columbia? Yeah, we're not going to hire you. Yeah. Already, there's already been a ton of that. Yeah. 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 There's been absolutely. a ton of companies came out said there is absolutely no way that they are hiring people from X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Like and the they ma have the they, major universities. They have every right to do that. Yes. Absolutely. The, yeah. The, the the point I wanted to end on, the second point, which was John's point about doing protests respectfully. I wanted to give a story about the last time there was a big blow up over uh, on the Israel side. So it must have been 10 years ago or so. There were weekly protests down in the city, Philadelphia, um, you know, pro-Palestinian types of protests. And it was every Friday afternoon. And when it when it got really bad over in the Middle East, they were large protests. And there were people with bill 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 horn, bullhorns. Yeah. You know, screaming slogans and such. Yeah. But I was able to get through to my train. Without incident, traffic seemed to be moving, even though you had people screaming on bullhorns and holding up signs. Yeah. They were protesting, but they were doing it without, you know, creating a problem for other people. Right. This right. is what's going on now is completely different. Like if you if you are gonna go and you're gonna screw up 
somebody's graduation ceremony. Yeah. You've paid a hundred thousand dollars for four years of school. You get it. You get a nice graduation ceremony time to celebrate with your family. If you, what's the word for somebody who does something just for themselves? Narcissist. Oh, a narcissist. Yeah. Like Luger. Yeah. Like Luger. <laughs> counter counter. Um, <laughs> These people are doing it not for not for the Palestinian people. Yeah. That's not what they're doing. No, they're not doing even it. Close. They're yeah. doing it to bring attention to themselves. And yeah. that is that is the real crime here. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're we're bringing attention and we've wasted too much time on these people already. We're bringing attention to low lifes who are very egotistical and want all this attention. Yeah. I would say Sad. this too. It's like, you know, you got to feel for those folks that uh, you know that you graduated in 2024 or just bailed in their degrees because of all of this nonsense. These are the same folks, guys, that in 2020, if you're in high school. Oh, oh that's a good point. Yep. I oh, saw, I heard goodness. that and I thought like, you know what? Yep. That sucks. That really? really sucks. You don't have that graduation. And it's like, but none of that, I mean, at the end of the day, it won't necessarily matter because if you have your degree, go out there and make a difference. That's the biggest uh, thing that you, you want to do. You right. Know? I mean, the, the the ceremony is for your family. It's to celebrate yeah. you. But you're right. You have what you need. Go out and make a difference. And yeah, far more it. important to be with your family. Far yes. more important to be with your family and get a couple of your friends together. Honestly, if you're in that kind of a boat right now, go and have a party with your friends and gather with your family and celebrate that. Don't have to be in the big ceremony. A lot of it is just bullshit to begin with. And a lot of them will just talk nonsense. Let me ask life. you this, Matt, because we both graduated Temple. Did you go to the full university ceremony? I, I only went to the one for the School of, of Science. Yeah, nice. Cosby spoke at it. That Did was he really? Oh. He lost, that was before <laughs> he lost his mind, unfortunately. Well, I think he was losing his mind during that time, too. <laughs> yeah. We just didn't know about we it. We just didn't know about it. Yeah, exactly. I want to go to class. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Eat some French fried potatoes. Oh. That one video I saw, I, I immediately, the kid walked away, but I was like, man, if that would have been me in my 20s, oh. I, would, I would have beat that dude with a branch. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Jeez. Unbelievable. Anyway. Uh, anyway, mm. topic two. <laughs> On a lighter mm, side, gator, gators, mm. gator <laughs> that don't bite. <laughs> I'm I'm stalling trying to remember the name of that movie. Oh, Sling Blade. That's right. Yeah, Sling oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 Billy yeah. Bob Thornton, Sling Blade. That's a good movie. You should check. There it you out. go. Check Tremendous that out. Actor. There you go. All right. Yeah, Wally the alligator. If you recall, uh, last year we had, I think not one but two. Yes. Different yeah, episodes. Yeah. We talked about this. Wally yep. the alligator, the emotional support gator. Yeah, he went Once, to Citizens Bank Park and was correct. rejected from going in and then went right. into the Wells Fargo Center. Crazy and as came. Gritty decided. <laughs> and that, yeah, that Gritty. And Gritty patented it the whole bit. So, yeah, we'll link those two episodes above. We'll find them. And we yep. were shocked that Gritty survived that encounter. That's, uh, <laughs> exactly. I was more worried about the alligator than I was Gritty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Gritty's got to be wanted for murder already. <laughs> Gritty also went to the Philadelphia Zoo, I think, at the same time, right? He, like, saw all the, li you know, the lions and the leopards. Oh, and yeah. He was, getting, yeah. That's right. he was getting the, the the one leopard all riled up behind the glass. He was, like, going <laughs> like this. Yeah. The... <laughs> oh, we love God. Gritty, but sometimes we, we get scared. Oh, yes. yeah. Uh, well, this is, this is unfortunate news regarding Wally the Gator, gentlemen. Um, Joey Henney had has thousands of social media users following his pages devoted to Wally, the cold-blooded companion. He calls his emotional support alligator. He has posted photos and videos online of people petting the five and a half, five and a half foot alligator. That's a big gator. Like yeah. a dog or hugging it like a teddy bear. Now, Henny says he is distraught after Wally vanished while accompanying him on an April vacation in Brunswick, Georgia, a port city 70 miles south of Savannah. He said he suspects someone stole Wally from the fenced outdoor enclosure where Wally spent the night on April 21st. In social media posts, Henny said pranksters left Wally outside the home of someone who called authorities, resulting in his alligator being trapped and released into the wild. 
We need all the help we can get to bring my baby back. Henny said in a tearful video posted on TikTok, please, we need your help. The Georgia Department of Natural Resources confirmed that someone in the Brunswick area reported a nuisance alligator on April 21st, the day Henny said Wally went missing and that a licensed trapper was dispatched to capture it. The agency said in a statement that the gator was released in a remote location, but stressed it does not know if the reptile was Wally. This is uh, this is very disappointing, John. Yes, yes. Not not that they uh, you know stole the alligator. Uh, no, not that, that they released the alligator. It's that they stole the alligator. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is this is this is why I hate social media because some narcissist like Lex, Lex Luger, Luger. Um, steals <laughs> <laughs> steals <laughs> sorry three really oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Steal, steals it out it steals an alligator puts it on someone else what do you expect the person that walks outside and sees a five foot alligator a five yeah. foot alligator isn't a baby alligator it no. isn't it's it's not wearing a top hat. Doesn't have a cane. It's not like greetings when you come. It's an alligator. <laughs> yeah. Like you're gonna call the authorities, and the authorities are going to go. Hey, look, that's an alligator. Nobody knows it's Wally. It's not like he's carrying a wallet. Yeah. Like right. it doesn't is, have like a collar around him or anything. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Like right? this is. It's just. I feel. I feel really bad for this guy because. Yeah. This is his emotional sword alligator. I don't. I'm not. You know. I'm not trying to make fun of that at all. I think. If that brings him happiness and it helps him in his life, that's awesome that this yeah. thing exists. But it's just so sad. Like, the fact that the article called them pranksters. No, they're asshole. Yeah. Like, they're 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 thieves. They're not pranksters. Mm -hmm. they're, no. they're jerks. Why would you... Oh, look, I, I see an alligator in an outdoor... Exhibit. I'm going to steal it and put it on someone else's porch. You're a moron. Yeah. No. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. No. Yeah, Leave I mean, shit alone, people. And especially yeah, like when you have something like of that nature of of an alligator, it's like we. I think we were reading, was it like one of the handlers basically saying like you gotta like make sure that your hands essentially close. Oh yeah, that the jaw of the alligator in order for it to be moved for God's sake, because you never know what's going to happen. You know, with this thing, and it's like, yeah, what a what a weird. And bizarre turn of events, right, guys? With yeah. this whole it is, thing, it is. It, it's it's annoying because there were so many good stories. Like he brought joy to a lot of people, even yeah. though the, even though the Phillies were like, "Nope, no alligator," which we and agreed with. The Phillies, right? yeah, yeah. We totally agreed with. But yeah. that story brought a ton of other stories, and he was able to go to a lot of other events, and he became while he became a celebrity and brought mm -hmm. joy to a lot of people, and yeah. How it? How would people feel if what, someone on TikTok that brings joy to everybody and is on TikTok all the time and like a, any of these guys that have a million followers that like do special events and stuff? What if someone kidnapped them? Everybody'd be outraged. Yeah. But the, but the alligator gets kidnapped and nobody like we find this in a, in a, in an article very yeah. deep deep. Yeah. It just sucks. It it sucks. It's, people are stupid. I don't like it. People are narcissists. Lex Luger, counter. Um, I, I can I can sympathize. When we had a we had a cat who where we still have him, thankfully. Yep. He got out of the house uh, almost. Uh, I want to say eight years ago. Okay. God, was it that long? Ugh, yeah, wow. that's a long time. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he 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 got out of the house and he was missing for two weeks. Oh, and goodness. that that broke our hearts because we were I was afraid every day when I was driving to work I was going to see him dead on the side of the road or something. Yeah, oh, just, sure. We didn't know where he was or what happened to him, and he was yeah. a part of the family, and it it absolutely sucked that he was missing. Yeah. So I I ab absolutely feel for this guy. You know, alligator, cat, whatever your your pet or emotional support animal is. Um, you know, this is this is heinous that somebody would do this, and. Uh, I, I hope we could, I, if uh, Matt, if we can find like contact information for if, you know, anybody knows anything. Yeah. Uh, we, could, we, could. we could put it, you know, down the bottom here. Yep. My fear is they've released him into the wild. Oh, we got our cat back in two weeks. I had I had to put out a trap to get him, like a, one of those. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, raccoon kind of uh, what do you call it? Ethical 
yeah, traps, traps or whatnot. You know, that doesn't yeah. hurt them. Steel I'd put out one of those to to catch him and get him back. Uh, it, he he probably looked better than he should have for being yeah. gone for two weeks. Yeah, but he didn't. He he didn't look like himself. Yeah, he, he like was... saw some things. Yeah, I see. Yeah, some exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, my fear is Wally the alligator, who has lived in captivity as far as I understand for his entire life. Most of it, at least most of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Most of it doesn't know how to handle himself. And I think, John, you said in, in pre production, at Georgia, lower Georgia, that's some gator country. There's yeah, going to be gators and, every square foot. And <laughs> alligators are very territorial. You don't find two hanging out like, hey, what's up? Yeah. There's mating season and there's eating season, and that's pretty right. much what alligators do. So yeah, and and how is you know I don't know what his feeding regimen is like if he'd be able to find food on his own. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. That's another problem. So yeah. and the one of the things that scares me about it is that the owner said in the first, I think it was the first one, the Phillies article, uh, that he wasn't very aggressive. He wasn't like a biter. He was very timid. That scares me because I don't know if you've ever I've ever been close to a wild alligator. They're not timid. That's the <laughs> last thing that they are. That is very true. They're Absolutely. dinosaur eating machines. That's exactly what they are. Yeah. That also happened to, to us talking about, you know, Steve, with, with your cat. We also like uh, with Snowby, our, our uh, beloved Samoyed, she got out of the fence, basically just ran. Mm -hmm. And started running towards Route 73. Oh, jeez! I you you want to talk about a nightmare? But the parents had no idea where she was. I mean, and she ended up on the other side of 73, kind of like further on down, you know, back into a creek somewhere. And they finally grabbed her, and you could tell she was even spooked back then because she had seen some things that was like completely unfamiliar, namely cars running down oh, the road. Sure. It's yes. like, good this lord, this is my normal habitat. Yeah, it's not even <laughs> close. To my normal habitat. That's the thing. People, a lot of people, kind of assume, oh, it's a dog or a cat. They'll be like, oh, come here, and they'll, they'll. When they get out of the house, when they get out of their structured normal environment, they, they panic. Yeah. They have yeah. no idea what's going they have on. No idea what to do. They, yeah. they absolutely panic. Now, yeah. um, and I've I've told you guys the story. We were putting food out, hoping to get this cat back, and the food was disappearing. So we're like, oh, he must be eating at least. And then we saw who was eating the food one night. Yeah. You were it feeding was three that. raccoons. It yep. was not a cat. Yeah. You were feeding your new family. The yeah. Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so, look, Steve's awesome. Let's go get some more food. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of three narcissists. Oh, Lex Luger. Luger. Lex Luger. Right. Lex Luger. <laughs> well, let, let's hope that this guy can find Wally the alligator and get him back. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's uh, certainly a, a devastating story, and we hope for the best. In the Absolutely. Game. Yep. Hey, if you're not a full-time jackass, we invite you to our website, which would be two noobs talking.wordpress.com, T O O N O O B S talking. There you can watch old episodes all the way back to episode 140 on the site. And if you want to see something uh, before that, it gives you a link to our YouTube channel where you should like, share, subscribe. Don't be a boobs, follow the noobs. No, you yes. didn't say it right, Steve. Be Don't be sorry. A boobs. Be you. <laughs> you also have prime opportunity to just watch that last 20 seconds while Steve was talking. My cord for my headphones yes. just tried to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be certain to highlight that on the website. <laughs> exactly. I was almost strangled to death by my own equipment. I was kind of crazy. And I didn't move. <laughs> and, and if you don't like that type of visible comedy, if you only like to listen or if you're blind and can't watch us, there's plenty of audio uh, links you can find on our website, which will take you to websites where our podcast is broadcast audibly for the world to find. And if yours isn't there, it's because you're not using a popular one. Dude, we, we don't. We, know, we can't we, help you in that regard. Yeah, right? we I mean, can't keep up with the time. Well, the best well, we, we can do we is give you an RSS. Yet. We can give you an RSS feed, put it in your podcatcher and use whatever the hell you want. But yeah, don't come right. crying to us. Yeah. Take care of pretentious ass. <laughs> on the other side of the room, because we don't right. care. I mean, what is wrong with Amazon Music? Really? Uh, really? Jeff Bezos. Right? <laughs> Keeps yeah, throwing them out there. 
<laughs> I, yeah, that's but I'm true. pretty sure we're listening for free. So it's he's still just, Jeff Bezos. He's, uh, okay. he's he's Gary human being. Fine. All right. Speaking of, why don't I keep hanging hold of this hammer? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right, we're trying to ac- make your point, Steve. <laughs> We've got a great acronym coming up for topic three because this article comes from Jack TV. Oh my! Yes, indeed. Yes. Or is that Wajacked? Wajacked V. Wajacked V. Wajacked V. Yeah, there you go. Wajacked V yeah. article. PA man receives thirty-four billion dollar tax bill. Well, IRS weird. is investigating. That's weird. If you think I, your I taxes so. are high. If you think your taxes are high, and mine are, uh, one well, Pennsylvania yeah. man probably has you beat. Pennsylvania, I didn't realize that. Oh, boy. He says his jaw dropped when he got his latest tax bill. Barry Tangert says he was charged more than $34 billion in overdue taxes, penalties, and interest by the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. Oh, this is... I didn't even know. I thought this was the IRS. I didn't know it was yeah, the Pennsylvania. PhD. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. yes. Wow. The number is so big. It doesn't even fit on one line of the yeah. sheet. <laughs> because <laughs> Pennsylvania taxes don't really like eleven dollars if you are <laughs> eleven cents pay. more likely, yeah. <laughs> right? What are, the, what the, are we a big 3%? bill for yeah, a bill yeah. a big bill from there would not be Yeah. Would not be thirty four billion dollars. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Barry says this year his tax preparer noticed a mistake on his twenty twenty two return, sent in an amended return. He adds he actually got a refund from the IRS on the same day he got the bill. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. That's Barry did how reach out. Thought the system is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Barry did reach out to the Department of Revenue to see what was going on. They told him they'd look into it and get back to him in a few weeks, which means he will have to follow up five to six times after they get rid of floppy minutes. disks. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, right. Or, um, gentlemen, I don't know about you. I would love to have a thirty-four billion dollar tax bill because that probably means I made eighty billion dollars this yeah, year. Yeah. I would totally pay if I made eighty billion. I would be glad to hand you a check for thirty-four billion. It was. I'm, I'm sorry, the libertarian in me is screaming right now. I would not want to pay any taxes if I had eighty billion dollars in revenue. I'm sorry, I just that's all mine. See, I, I'm, I earned I'm, that. No, Why I'm am all I giving for, it to the government. You know that kind of. I'm deal, all so. for paying my fair share. Um. Oh, stop it, Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm all for well, you, if it's I'm three, making a hundred forty three forty billion eleven D <laughs> million dollars they they owe. Around. I a hundred percent agree with you, Matt. From yeah. my salary, I shouldn't be paying these idiots anything. <laughs> uh, but if I make eighty billion dollars. Okay. Yeah, you want to pay taxes. It doesn't have to be as drastic as Joe Biden wants it to be. Like, no, yeah. He wants him to pay everything and then it forgives student loan. That's yeah. dumb. But, yeah. like, I... <laughs> yeah. I realized I, if I made $80 billion, I could move to an island. Yes. A remote island and be away from people. Like and I could pay someone... I could pay someone a million dollars a year to get my groceries. Yep. There you go. And that wouldn't, and I could do that for the rest of my life. And it wouldn't but it would put also a cost you, Yeah, that. it would yeah. also cost you a million dollars for the groceries because he would have to like sail his ship <laughs> to get the groceries. And then, still wouldn't make a dent. Yeah, it sure. still wouldn't make a dent. Yeah. Well, here I was. I was all ready to jump all over Biden and the IRS hiring like 80,000 more people last year. There was 85,000. 85,000. Thank you for the correction. 85,000 people to the IRS. I was ready to jump all over that and say, you guys can't double check the bills you're sending out. But here is the PA Department of Revenue. Department of Revenue? Which is probably even worse. Because you are a small department. Um. Yeah, you and, probably have like maybe fifty people, maybe. If that. and the que- the question is, you see, okay, uh, okay, Matt owes eleven dollars, Steve owes eleven dollars, John owns eleven dollars, Fred over there owns eleven dollars. Oh, thirty four billion. Oh well, that just goes <laughs> in that pile. Wait, what right? The, like seriously? Like, yeah, right. Yeah, I, oh, the reason man. I love this article so much is it, it is state tax. Like, are you kidding? Like. That is the easiest way to find. I understand the federal government. You're yeah. you're handling everybody. You're yep. handling yeah. Jeff Bezos to me. 
Like, <laughs> there are some, you could probably make a mistake. But yeah. come on, the PA tax, you, how many $34 billion mistakes are there? Right. Yeah. That's my question. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, lean six this for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So if we're going to do this seriously, we have to figure out what caused the problem. We have to get down to the root cause of this issue. This Heck sounds. <laughs> that's that's, the, that's the ultimate <laughs> ultimate root. That that is a definite one. We're going to write that down. He's Taxation start, is definitely start one there of them. And uh, it's going to start there. But uh, by the I way, think... just so everybody watching, I'm all for consumption tax, not income tax. So if if you don't get my jokes, I'm literally against <laughs> how they do it, and I yeah. want to do it another way, just to clear everything up. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this to me sounds like it's more clerical error than anything. I mean, I mean, you're thinking about most PA department. I mean, I, I had to look this up. Maybe state tax, I think, 6% right across the board. I think for all items, I think. Um, uh, I'm thinking yeah, mostly in terms sales of tax. my purchases. Yeah, the sales, sales tax. Yeah. 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 So Department of Tax Revenue, you're probably looking maybe about half that, I'm guessing. I'm just spitballing here. Let's just say it's 3%. That would mean that guy would have to be earning, gosh. Oh, hell yeah. 87 you know I mean? gazillion dollars. Yeah. I'm like, easily, I like, into do that. the multiple, <laughs> multiple billions of dollars. I don't see that happening. Therefore, I think it is a definite clerical error that was probably just, you know, put into place. And I mean, do you think they've got bots running these bills that they're sending out? Or do you think probably. humans are actually checking them? Because- I would assume if humans are checking them and you see a number running over to the second line, that might give you pause to be yeah. like, hmm, I might want to double check that one. Yeah, hey, hey, I hey boss, can you come over here for a minute? <laughs> I've got a 34 billion. I've done nothing but $11 for the last eight hours. Yeah. And, well, I, can, can you take a look at this for me? For sure. Yeah, I, I'll give you a great example of that, guys. I worked for a company that had a month-end review. Uh, the billing department and what well, our main goal was to look and to make sure that all of our billing rates were correct. Any rate that was incorrect had a rate of $99 and 99 cents. It was known as what we called our error rate because we knew at that point that, that the, the yeah. rate was skyrocketing. It would cause an outrageous amount to be billed, you know, on a particular customer's invoice. We knew our amounts were, and we're talking like in the pennies and cents, that kind of thing, 10, 12 cents, that kind of a deal. Large volume, you know, that kind of a deal. So right. if you get $99.99 on activity that's like you're doing 1,000 file transfers, all of a sudden you're looking at about a $99,000 invoice. That's right. not exactly correct, right? You want to correct that before the invoice goes out. This to me, there was none of that. And that's where I would pinpoint in terms of lean six. What are we doing in terms of making sure that the rates are double, we're double checking all the rates, you know, that kind of deal. And then just gutting down to that root cause to try and figure that out. Lead six uh, over. I yeah, have part of my problem with the whole tax system is I've seen this. Th the way the tax system works is the government knows how much you owe. Yes. You have to guess. Yep. <laughs> and that's the wrong, thing that you well, get you penalized. You said that. Uh, Steve, yeah. a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I had no idea that that's exactly you. Like, you have to estimate. That's oh, yeah. just yep. so weird to me. That's just like, like I, I, you know, I get paid an annual salary. This is what your tax rate is. This is the standard deductions. You owe this amount, or the you know, the refund is coming from the yeah. This, this happened. This happened. This happened. You just got what a weird. I've been story. filing oh, man, taxes now. the same way for so many years. Yeah. It's just because you, you, you it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, the, the estimated taxes is, is one issue that I have, but what yeah. I'm talking about is even for somebody, if you have withholdings, yep. you know, on a standard salary, yep. you still have to file a tax return and you are still guessing as to what you owe. You are, you're using all the tools, yeah. but you're like, okay, this is my best guess for what I believe was owed from my salary this year based yes. on all the deductions. Here you go. And if the IRS is like, nope, you got it wrong, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's so about, bizarre. It's yeah, so bizarre. How about They're like, it, tell me, <laughs> I'll check if you're right, and then we'll settle up. 
<laughs> Don't make me go through the guessing game. I 100% yeah. agree with you. It, it, taxes should be easier than ordering a burger. If you <laughs> yes. go to Five Guys, right, and you're like, I want a double burger. I want it with cheese. I want it with bacon. I want it with X, Y, Z. I want French fries. I want a drink, right? Here's 20 five, bucks. Five Guys in 11 seconds will say, that's 12.54, right? right? And you're like, no problem. Yeah. The government is like, hey, you worked. We know. <laughs> Figure it out. I'll talk to you later. They're drug dealers at this point. <laughs> like, they're not even. Yo, you remember last Thursday you cop that? Yeah, yo, yeah. that too. Like, they're, yeah. they're scheming over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Idiots. Yeah. Well, the, hopefully this guy can get it sorted out because, um, I've had I've had interesting erroneous uh, communications from various tax offices. Not bad. And they 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 don't. Uh, it's not a one call kind of thing. No. Yeah, it takes multiple it is calls. Not. Fortunately, fortunately, the firm I am with, we have an accountant who handles all that for me. There you take go. That trouble off of it. So thank God. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. You know, it'd, it'd be right back to the medical billing shit we talked about a few weeks ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And don't worry. I mean, with all these big companies, they write off everything. John, did you did you notice how when we asked Matt to lean six it this week, he actually did like a real deep kind of dive into the material. Whereas oh, last yeah. week he was just, yeah, just throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I was about to be like, what did you pay all that money for? For the six black belt, if that's going to be your answer. <laughs> hey. Some problems are very obvious. Some require requests, you know, some require more in-depth solutions. Well, uh, you know, so my you solution was, hey, dumbass, proofread your bills before you send them out. Or you exactly. get the hammer. Yeah. You know, all uh, right. I don't know. All right. Yes, exactly. Well, topic four. This should be fun. John always likes to pretend that he's a wrestling creative and he should be in charge of what's going on at the WWE or whatever they call themselves these days. I don't want to be in charge of them. I, they're doing a good job. Well, um, yeah. But what we're going to do today is we're going to try to create the perfect wrestler. Oh. Um, which is something you could do on video games. You know, you choose different things. That's kind of where I got the idea from. Uh, you know, you go into a, a wrestling video game like WrestleMania 2000 or, or whatever is coming out these days. You pick all these different characteristics and moves and styles, put it in, and then that's how you go out and play the game. Well, we want to do that here. What's going to happen is Matt and I are both going to be competing to pitch certain characteristics, and John will make the decision on which one to choose for our first wrestler. There you go. John Each will then... Each characteristic, yeah. so I had so it's going to be a, a build between you and Matt. Or... Yes. So for, for okay, example, entrance it, song, it. Matt will pitch something. I will pitch something. You choose yeah. which one shall be applied to this first got wrestler. It. The okay. second wrestler will then be all John's suggestions. Wow. Is somebody writing this down? Yes. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, I, I without pen. Oh, so right. Just, <laughs> that's right. John's in an undisclosed location. Although, don't undisclosed locations typically have pens and pads of paper you can use? Yeah. Well, not in prison. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we forgot to oh, mention John goodness. was arrested after last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was Donovan's fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After all that heat you brought. Yes, good seriously. Lord. Anyway, seriously. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so which well, one? I wasn't the one that said he was on the most disappointing list. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I have paper. I have pen. Excellent. All right, so we're going to get two wrestlers out of this, and then we will discuss which one is better. Is it the one creatively contemplated between the three of us, or was it John going off on his own? We there shall find out. The seven okay. characteristics we have going for us are entrance song, entrance style, so how you come to the ring. Do you, do you walk fast? Do you walk slow? Do you high five? Do you elbow people in the face as you're going? You know, there you go. Uh, promo, what does your promo ability look like? Ring attire, what are you wearing to and in the ring? There you go. Wrestling style, are you a high flyer? Are you a sumo wrestler? Are you just 
you know, the ultimate Big warrior. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, what what are you? Oh. Yes, in a minute. <laughs> in exactly. ring taunt. So when you're taunting somebody in the ring, what does it look like? And then finally, because every wrestler's got to have one, you got to do the finishing move. There you go. All right. So we're going to start on wrestler one. Matt and I are pitching this. Okay. Let's, let's so see for here. entrance song, I'll I'll go first for this one because I, yep. I I enjoy this wrestling song. There you um, go, John. I'm going to pitch the game by Motorhead. <laughs> what a great, <laughs> what a great song. And I I originally sure. thought like oh I should I should do like one of the Joe Johnston things like yeah. Mr. Perfect. Um, you but know, that would have been another good one, yeah, a yeah, good one. Good one. but it, 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 I just love that song by Motorhead. It's, it's so, yeah, fantastic. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. All right. And it, and it fit his character so well. That's what yeah. made, that's what made that song so well. They were, he's talking, Motorhead is talking about him as he's walking to the ring. Yeah. Right. And, and cool. it also makes the spitting of water much more cooler. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he always, Funny. he's always had good energy music. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I think the one thing for me, I'm going Go a little early nineties. Gonna go with the entrance theme of Money Incorporated. Oh jeez. Money, 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 <laughs> money, money. With the la- with the Ted DiBiase laugh in there. Oh yeah, yeah totally, absolutely. totally, yeah. totally, totally. A million dollar man always gets his way. <laughs> <laughs> what a great day! What a great, what a great day team. All right, oh, so John, it. you got to pick one. Walking. What would you I say, gotta John? go. I got to near and dear to my heart. I got to go with. Motorhead, oh, I, okay. I heard it. I heard it last night uh, on the pre-show of the pay-per-view, and it's funny that you brought that up because I was thinking last night. I was like, just listening to the words, and I'm like, man, what a choice for an entrance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> it's so his character. They're talking about his character, and that's the funniest part. Like, Motorhead wrote that song about the actual character that he's playing. Yeah, I believe I saw they played it live. Uh, yes, at one. Yeah. I think it was even on WrestleMania. Yeah, they, him, and when he uh, Triple H actually spoke at Lemmy's funeral. Wow. Uh, yeah, they were really good friends. Like when he wrote that song for him, he wrote it. He was a big fan of his, and he wrote it for the character. And it's so, so amazing that song. It's just if you're if you're a wrestling fan, you like the character of Triple H, that song is actually telling you what he's going to do. He's going to outthink you. He's yeah. going to lie, cheat, and steal. He's going <laughs> yeah. to be on top. Like, he is he is yeah. this person. It's a, it's a really cool song. Yeah. So I, just, I, picked that I just like, time to play the game. Yes, <laughs> I, I like I like Motorhead, so right. I instantly like yeah, that song. Absolutely. Exactly. That's really good. All right, moving yeah. on to the second characteristic. We have entrance style. Matt, I will let you go first this time. Yeah, I would probably say um, I, I, what I'm loving right now about Cody, uh, Cody Rhodes, is like his whole entrance attire. It's like he's got that big, long robe, you know, and it's turn white and blue and a whole bay. Definitely hyping up the gimmick. Totally stole American from his dad nightmare. and Ric Flair. Yep. Yeah. Totally stole from Ric Flair and his dad. Yeah, yeah. I've always loved, <laughs> for some reason, I've always loved the long robes. I, I just think that it, it's so over the top when Agreed. it comes to a wrestler. Because normally when they wrestle, it's obviously they're in either long long pants or you know, in bathing suits. Wait a minute, we're doing ring attire now? Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Entrance, like, style. Uh, entrance, entrance style. style heading in the ring. I'm just saying, like, I think the entrance style would be kind of cool just to have that that Cody like entrance yeah. where you have no, like, I'll totally a understand pyro going in the background, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Extra pyro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Extra yeah, pyro. Yeah. Very fans chanting. Yep. Yep. Okay. My proposal for entrance style. Uh, yeah, I do I do love the slow, you know, I like the board walking of uh Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. I like the oh, yeah. Undertaker taking his time. It takes about 50 years, yeah, to, 50 get to, years the ring. to get to the ring. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go the complete opposite because this oh. guy could not wrestle a lick. But I think when you watch the energy he comes to the ring with, that's why people love him so much. And that was the ultimate warrior. Ultimate warrior. The oh, dude wow. freaking yeah. sprinted to the ring and then <laughs> shook the rope. That's like, that's that's what I want. I want that energy, man. I got to yeah, have that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Tell you a quick, 
tell you a quick story. When he wrestled Andre the Giant, Andre the Giant was mocking him by shaking the <laughs> rope, and he was shaking the entire ring. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. As, as one would if you were that size. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. All right. So, so between, so between those two, I will pick Cody okay. because okay. it is it is the per it is a perfect entrance. It is. Yeah. He learned from the people in the past. He learned from the edges, and he learned from the Undertakers, and he learned he learned where the pyro goes. He understands where to stop. He understands where to. Yeah. He takes his time down where he there. Poses and all that gives, kind of stuff. Gives the yeah. belt away at the end, like the baby face he's supposed to be. It's, yeah. It's 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 all perfect. Like yeah. It's 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 very very forced and very perfect. So I'm going with that. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have the promo. Promo. And oh, I'll boy. take the first shot here, and I think you guys would know where I'm going because there's only one man oh, who can macho. do a promo. Yeah, cup of coffee. Yeah, that's right. The cream rises to the top. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think you go any other way. But Nat, I will let you try. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you. I don't know how you couldn't. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think if I had to come close, gosh, Sting's promos were always so good. Yeah, like whether he was a TNA, AEW. There was always that strong intensity that he would always have. If he was so determined to beat you, uh, he was a perfect baby face. Hell, I'll even throw it when he was a Joker stank back in the TNA days. That was probably some of the best work I've ever seen. Yeah, where he went completely yeah. off the ro- off the rocker. He was he stole it from Heath Ledger, of course. But I mean, <laughs> but, but his, his style was weird. Was, it was it was definitely yeah. different. It's kind of very intense, but determined. Would, would probably be the best way that I could do it. But I, I mean, that's a, yeah. That's a tough, if I got to put the Joker thing into, uh, yeah, even Macho like that, it could, Macho was a part of that at a time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Joker thing. That was, it was very interesting. But taking Sting's whole career, yeah. Yeah. Man, oh, what a body of work. Uh, 60, yeah. What did he retire at 64? 64. Jeez. <laughs> like, wrestled off of since he was balconies and shit. Yeah, wrestled crazy. since he was 19 or whatever that was. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, well, you got to pick one. Got to go Mach. I mean, of that course, was yeah. It's, it's the, it all promos. If it's not a Dusty promo, it's a Mach promo. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. I saw yeah. I saw a good one last week. Your mustache is crooked. <laughs> His cream of the crop was <laughs> it's a standard bearer for all people to learn the business because he didn't write it. He was walking from catering and picked yeah. up a couple creamers and figured it out. <laughs> and, and the way that he uses it, the cream. It was it, to the it's, job. It, he's, Brilliant. He's, yeah. Oh, he's an actor. He was yeah. always an actor. He will always forever be probably one of the best. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely take Macho's part out. Staying, though, go. very close second. I mean, yeah. especially if anybody's watching this and wants some wrestling advice, Joker staying, just just dive into it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a good nine months of craziness. Yeah. All right. Next, we go to ring attire. So what are you wearing in the ring? Matt, you can go first on this one. John, you made a great point on this, and I completely agree. Wrestlers should be wearing long pants <laughs> yes. the rest yes. of yes. your career. Yes. Please, yes. for the love of God. Mike the Miz Mizanin, please, for the love of God. Yeah, put on long pants. Put on long pants, man. <laughs> Seriously. It was all, all the guys that can actually work wear long pants. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better. I think you should wear long pants and a shirt. <laughs> yes. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. If you're in good physique, I'm okay. I just I just don't need like I said, there's a reason we brought that up in the podcast. I don't need Finn Balor jumping up on the before yeah. he was when he was not wearing long pants. And my wife and my daughter giggling when he jumps up on the rope because obviously we're seeing something that <laughs> I'm trying not to look at. I'm like, hey, he's there. And they're laughing. And I'm like, see, wrestlers need to not do this. Not do this. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'll, okay, for ring attire, I will also pitch Macho Man because he had a nice set of long pants and, uh, you know, a semi shirt. So uh, yeah. I'll pitch that. But he also, he was, he was, 
a short pants yes, guy for he a was long for a long time. Correct. However, he did time. see the light eventually. I think that's because he didn't work on his legs <laughs> after a while. It was all off her body. <laughs> nothing means nothing, dear. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So I love Mott to death. What do you yeah. got? Not that there's much choice between the two of us, but no. Yeah, a, a tire has to be a, a quick, quick. Can I ask three questions? Yeah, sure. sure. Long robe or jacket? Long robe for me. Steve? I'll cede to that. Okay. Yep. So long robe. Fine. So uh sunglasses, headgear, anything. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so you want the whole you want the macho whole experience. Yeah. Like I mean, the, you yeah, know, like the, the outside. Show, taker, yeah, I mean, you know, it's always cool when you see him have to take the hat off and like take all yeah. that stuff. Matt, yeah. are you going more Cody Conda ring oh. attire or or do you want like or do you want Money Inc. where they like literally had to take off their fake suits and, what was and great about was IRS, IRS wrestled in, in his <laughs> yes. <and> shirt? Yes. <laughs> he he wrestled in a in a business shirt. So and you want gimmicks? So you want gimmick gimmick? Like I want the, gimmick, the gimmick. wrestling attire yes. goes to the ring with the okay, got it. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. There's where I have to go with Matt. Like pure okay. like okay. wear your wear your wrestling attire. Yes. Uh, gimmick gimmick yeah okay yeah. all right it's old yeah, school like, think it's of school. irs like in suspenders long pants looking like he was at the office well and he's and he's taking bumps that makes a lot of sense because when we designed we i had wrestlemania 2000 for nintendo 64 we all designed our own wrestling characters and one of matt's <laughs> ring attires was he had yes. the business like the the button down collared shirt <laughs> but he wore cut off jeans on the front yes of it's all about business casual, baby. Business casual. <laughs> yes. So it all comes full circle. All right. Yeah, next, next up, we got wrestling style. What what is your what is your ring uh, uh, acumen like? And I'm what do you do? Go, just name. I'm yeah, just name a wrestler. Bret Hart. Why well, you going Bret? Excellent okay. execution. That's what yeah. It's in his name. <laughs> I would probably probably top five ring technician of all time. Yeah. His brother might have been better than him, but. We won't talk about that, but uh Yeah. I would say the closest would be Kenny Omega, but I mean he's got diverticulitis right now and hopefully Ooh. he's all right. But uh X. Yeah. And he's pretty good at what he does. But he's pretty good at what he does. But yeah, I would I would be glad to secede or cede Seed, to yeah, Bret not Hart. Secede. You're not yeah, seceding. Not seceding. Yeah. <laughs> You're not seceding. But I would see Bret Hart, Johnny, if you wanted to go that route too. In ring technician. I, I mean I like Kenny's work. Um Yeah. I just think Kenny Omega is just like the best thing I've ever, best wrestler I've ever seen. I, the only thing I'll say about Kenny Omega is what my wife said to Kenny Omega and it made me, I, I literally, I literally spit beer on the floor when she said it. <laughs> the first time she ever saw him wrestle, I had seen him wrestle like 20, 30 times. The first time she'd seen him wrestle, is like, why do you like him? <laughs> <laughs> she had watched wrestling with me for four years. So yeah. she already understood what I liked about wrestling. And yeah. she was like, why do you like him? And it made me think about them. Um, he's tremendous. He yeah. is absolutely tremendous. But yeah, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Hart Dynasty, anybody. Really, Chris Jericho, yeah, you can put them all. Kenny Omega is in that category. They all, they, they fun, funny, they all were trained by the same people yeah so that it's called catches catch can is what daniel byron calls it it's it's a very matt traditional respect gunter wrestles that same style yep uh Giovanti, all those guys chad gable timmy zane they all wrestle that same style so yeah. I, yeah, I'll go with the, 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 we'll call it the Canadian style. <laughs> there you go. Uh, because okay. it, it is very, it's very popular in wrestling and I love, and I love it. Yeah. Always gets a good pop when it, whenever mm -hmm. it happens, right. that's for sure. Next category, in-ring taunt, Matt. <laughs> so I, I kind of, you know, we talked about the game earlier. His original gimmick as the Greenwich, you know, the, the snooty Greenwich guy. <laughs> the blue where he bows yeah. in front of the ring. That Vince stole from WCW because he was already that guy with, yeah. a, with his normal name. Yeah. <laughs> with his government so I, name. I mean, that's got to be, I would throw that in there. Um, you know, that kind of snooty little, oh, better than you and you know it, that kind of a deal. And Oh, you know. he used to bow? Yeah. 
Yeah, he used, used to, to do the he used to do three, three moves and then bow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was perfect. Absolutely, it was perfect. Right. Fit the heel. perfectly. Okay, yep. he was best heel ever. My pitch is the uh, Stone Cold barking in your face and throwing up the middle fingers. Yeah, <laughs> love it. In ring love taunt. It. Love it. Yeah, that like you can't go wrong. You can't get wrong with either of them. I will go Stone Cold because he needs to be yeah. on the list. Yeah, no <laughs> question. Needs to be on. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Austin 316, I just whipped your ass. He came up with that as he was walking back. <laughs> like, that was not a written promo. Yeah. Hit a grand slam. He oh, says yeah. it like whenever you, you see like, a, I think it was like an AD, and he's like, I just hit two grand slams with two yeah, promos. It's, it's, yeah. Just amazing. All right, so ma- magic in a bottle. So we'll wrap this yeah. guy up with a finishing move. Oh, um, I'll go first. It's for me. It's got to be the razor's edge. Oh, that, that man. finishing move is so the strength required, and the power, and yeah. the absolute devastation it inflicts upon the opponent. Second, probably only to the bonsai drop from six hundred pound Yokozuna. Yes. Um, I, the razor's edge to me is the ultimate finisher. Very Just so good. people know, Jay and Jimmy Uso took the bonsai drop. You don't feel a thing. Uh, <laughs> they were like unless, eleven when unless, they took it. Unless he does the version where he kicks his feet out, yes, then you might exactly. feel something. Yeah, uh, Johnny. Good old whenever Rodney. I think, whenever I think finishers that get the biggest pop, just talked about them. The stunner. Yeah, it's oh, greatest greatest oh, finisher yeah. of all time, as far oh, as yeah. I'm concerned. Kick to the gut, boom. Yeah, you know, that kind of you know, and you fly backwards. And some of them have been so great over the years. <laughs> oh, the rock, the rock was amazing. Awesome yeah. theories was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, you could just Scott yeah. Hall had a good one. So, oh yeah, yeah Scott, Scott Hall was that. Scott Hall was very Hall underrated. Yeah, sold more stunners. <laughs> than- <laughs> What a talent. All right, so yeah. what are you picking there? It's hard. This is a hard one. What? I'm going to go to Stunner because it's the, yeah. it's literally the most famous fit. All right. Yep. Both are actually being used today by really good talent. Now. So it's keeping it alive. And the Razor's Edge, we've watched it. Both, I mean, uh, it really is an amazing move. Scott Hall signed off on the guy who's using it now. Uh, years ago, he signed off and said, you should use this because you are, yeah. you know, really tall like I am. <laughs> like, I think they're both 6'8", and he was like, you should probably use this move because it, yeah. it would totally get you over, and he's a champ now, and he, it's Samian Priest. He's, he oh, uses yeah. it. He does not use it as his finisher, but yeah. he uses it as a devastating Set move up to the in finish. his mood set. Yeah, in his yeah, mood yeah, yeah. set. Yeah. All yeah. right, so we've got our first wrestler pinned down. John, yep. uh, all right, it's your no turn to fill out. Yeah, right. I did that on purpose. There you go. It's yes. your turn to fill out wrestler number two. Well, Entrance song. So I have a problem with this, and I this is the swerve that I'm going with, bro. So William Regal cut a promo a while ago. Matt might right. remember this because Matt watches AEW. William Regal called a man the perfect wrestler. And I don't, I don't want to create a wrestler. I'm going to just call Brian Danielson the perfect wrestler. And oh. that is what I picked. The entrance music is perfect. Yeah. Fly the, the entrance Valkyries. style yeah. is perfect. Yeah. The in-ring is what we've already talked about. The dude can cut a promo. Yeah. His wrestling style is perfect. Can do a <laughs> like face or a nothing- heel. There's nothing wrong with him. And William Regal, who I respect more than anything, says he's the perfect wrestler, and I agree. Interesting. Mm, okay, so you're copping out. Uh- no, I'm not <laughs> copping out. He literally is the perfect wrestler. All right, then. All right, so we have wrestler number one. We have wrestler number two. Um, I pick your your guy's wrestler because there's so many Hall of Famers into it. I think it would be <laughs> genius. <laughs> All right, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, boy, I, I mean, you can't go wrong with Brian Danielson at all, Johnny. That's such a great. I'm glad you mentioned him on the podcast. Per- he is he's a tremendous wrestler. performer, no question about it. Had a great match with Osprey uh, in the last pay per view that AEW did. I didn't watch it, but I heard it was like one of the best. Ever. It was really good. It was really good. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think I tend to agree. I, I It's really close because it's like you have Danielson is like this technically sound, perfect wrestler, top to bottom. He literally when, is the perfect wrestler. It's crazy. Yeah. And when you have like a collection of what Steve and I just put together, it's like a combination of going up against Danielson. And it would be a ter- perfect time limit draw if they were to face each other. It you would be I mean? a 60 minute Iron Man. It totally would be. It would totally be. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, th- I would probably say it's a draw I, you know, between the two. Uh, leaving the crowd going, what the hell? There should be a finish. What the <laughs> hell? What the hell? You know, they do, but you're happy you saw it. You know, but you're going back to the dusty days. You're going back to the 60 minute time. Limit. No draw. Like, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I am going to pick because, you know, the green oh, rises to the top. To the top. I'm and that, picking I think, Macho the Hitman game Austin. <laughs> <laughs> he but that would, and that's funny because that would be the perfect wrestler to wrestle a guy like Brian Danielson. <laughs> yeah. Like literally, because he is all of that. That's where he learned it from. It. Yeah. It's funny. Wrestling is wrestling is the greatest form of entertainment to me because it can be whatever the fuck you want it to be yeah it can be anything yeah and that's what makes me love it and i've i've been since i was very young i've been involved in watching and critiquing and loving all forms of all forms of wrestling new japan is probably my favorite they just put it on at 3 a.m. and I don't have that kind of time. Um, <laughs> if that thing was on like midday, I could totally watch it. But yeah. Yeah. And wrestling is just cool. Like, and for the first time, it, it is actually really cool. So yeah. if, if you like watching it, you should tell everybody you like watching it because there's billions of people that actually like watching it. There you go. There you go. Well, unfortunately I tried. I can't, I can't do it anymore. But uh, <laughs> I can, you know, I can live to. the glory days. It's all yeah. good. The, the old yeah. the old days was what I liked. So they, it, at least at some point it meant that to me, which is yeah. which is fun. That's good. So we've we've created our own wrestlers. We've had a good time. That ends episode 188. We've made John happy. Um, next week though, we're gonna make John sad because we're gonna have to rip apart the Sixers. Oh. Uh, and yeah. I think we're gonna have a tournament about bad Philadelphia sports contracts. Yes, we are. That yes, should be are. quite an interesting discussion. But yes. until then, get out. Thanks for checking out this episode of Two Noobs Talking. For more information about our podcast, feel free to check out our website located at twonoobstalking.wordpress.com. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>